it's been uh, an amazing to be honest like uh, players the staff uh, the fans the club every everyone has been extremely welcoming and and obviously it was difficult because I had to travel on I travel on Sunday and, and, and landed here and, and start on, on, on Monday morning uh, but with the effort from everyone and the willingness to work it's just made everything really easy and the transition has been absolutely brilliant so hopefully we can tomorrow start showing a little bit of that work that we're doing no? yeah absolutely Theo go ahead Hi Han, uh, f officially welcome and I hope it's Thank been you. a good first week. Uh, what were you looking to accomplish in your first week and what did you accomplish in your, in your first week on in, uh, in training? Yeah, well the, the, the target for this week was to start knowing everyone personally. I am a big, big fan of my, my values are about people and and at the end of the day, we are all people, so getting to know the players, the staff, uh, how they do things, who they are, how they are, so getting to know each other it was definitely one of the targets. Uh, at the same time, uh, I got experience coming to a team in the middle of the season. It's not the same that when you kind of start in pre-season, you got time to adapt, time to install your principles, your, your values, your, your way of doing things. You, you have I have had to adapt really quick. So obviously the other target is uh, we will see tomorrow if we can achieve it because he's uh, beating uh, Chicago on that first, first game very, very hard. Our target is to compete, our target is to win, like it, w it will always be. And it will be tomorrow after the game when I can tell you if we accomplished that one or not. We definitely get to know, we got to, to know each other and, and it's over exceed my expectations. So that we can definitely tick the box. And if we could tick tomorrow that box of getting three points against such a difficult team, it would be, it would be an unforgettable, unforgettable weekend. Well, what are the exercises or what are the ways in which you get to know people and you tick that tick that box? What are the what are the tricks to getting to know your your players or your coach fellow coaches? Well, I think it's trying to spend as much time as you can with them. Sometimes, obviously, I haven't met everyone individually, but there has been some already individual meetings. There has been connections uh, on and off the pitch here at the training ground, and and I think that's massively important. But also how they how they behave on the pitch. I think. Uh, with experience, I've been coaching now for like 24 years, so so you quickly know people how they feel in certain situations, so starting to know how to approach players because uh, you know every per every person is different, every person needs a different approach. You need to be, uh, you know, some players need to need to be a bit more pushed, some players need to be rewarded at certain moments. Uh, some players, you know, it's, it's it's all I can't explain it because I think it comes with the with the coaching with the coaching role. But I think that's that's massively important, and and, and that they know that my door is open, uh, that I, I'm here for them. They're here for me. I will tell them what I think. They have to be ready for it. We are in a high performance environment, uh, but always doing it in a respectful way and in a way that that I help them to to be better. Because if they are better, then the dash is going to be better, and that's my goal. What's it been like working with Sarah, and where have you? kind of divided the work up either with her or with other assistants? Yeah, well, we, with Sarah, she's, she's been brilliant. Obviously, I, I met her before online. It, it was, it was a, like a long-distance relation already. Uh, it was great to finally meet her in person, and she's been, she's been brilliant. The same that, that with the rest of the staff, uh, Hero, Michael, Matt, Corey, those are a little bit of on the coaching side, but we have such an amazing supporting supporting staff as well, on the medical, the media, player care, psychologists, you know, it's, you know everyone plays their part and, and everyone, I've been trying to start pointing in the direction that I want to go and and if everyone pushes on that direction, I'm sure we are we are in for a success we are in for a, for a success formula. So uh, that's been a little bit of it. And and in terms of the football, obviously we've been trying to touch on key concepts on on every aspect of the game in order to be prepared for the game tomorrow against against Chicago. No? Um, last one for me. And I don't want to let some of the other guys have a question. Um, are we expecting? I saw Maria was back in training uh, from Concacaf W. Uh, are we expecting her to have a minutes restriction tomorrow, or is she ready to go? Well, it's a difficult. It's difficult to say because obviously she's had like five games in such a short period of time. Uh, 
Obviously, the outcome is not what we wanted because for me, I want my players when they go internationally to, to be successful. In this case, unfortunately, Mexico uh, didn't get the, the qualification that they were looking for. So we will have to really wait till till tomorrow, see how they are reco how she recovers. Uh, she trained last night. She will train today, and then tomorrow uh, we will make the, the decision if she's ready to to start or not. But she's had a a heavy workload on, on, on these last few weeks. No? Grant, go ahead. Thank you, Theo, very much. Oh, I can hear you, Grant. I think you're talking okay. about something. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Coach. Bienvenido a Houston. Gracias. Um, first, uh, another question on eligibility. Uh, availability for tomorrow. Uh, Elizabeth Eddy was was away with her family for the for the last game. Uh, she posted some updates updates online, but it wasn't clear if she's if she's back yet. Do you know if she's going to be with the team tomorrow? Yeah, Lizzie. Well, first and foremost, uh, I think the obviously now that it's public, it's, it's been a difficult time for her and her family. I think she's very appreciative and she really, you know, she's very grateful on the way the club and and everyone has. Behave her teammates uh, put put something online to help her you know that picture before the game the other day uh, I think the club has been supporting her in in every way or form and and from here I would like to send the best wishes to 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 her dad so hopefully he recovers uh, quickly and with Liz she's been training throughout the week he's been competing with her with her teammates and if she if she finally tomorrow could be could be in the starting lineup and could be on the bench, so she's she's available to to play. Um, so yeah. Great. And um, next we're going to be talking. I think after this to Brie Vasali. Can you uh, share a little bit about about her, your impressions of her, and and what she's up to this week? Uh, Brie Vasali. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's been, you know, she's been fantastic on, on on when she's been on the pitch lately. She's been very good at training as well. Same than than the rest of the midfielders. There is there is definitely talent there. They, they got you know there is different ways of understanding the game. I think uh, Bree Bree is doing really well, and she will play some sort of role tomorrow. I'm not sure if he will be starting yet or if he will be from the bench, but he definitely deserves to be on the pitch at, at some point. Great. Um, y uno, uno más en español, si, sí. si quiere. Claro. Uh, ti, 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 ¿Había un, una sorpresa o, o algo que no, ha, no habías anticipado de, de Houston y, y, y su experiencia aquí? Eh, bueno, pues creo que esa sorpresa ha sido positiva, ¿no? Y ha sido la bienvenida de la gente. Creo que tenía unas expectativas muy altas de cómo era el club, pero no, de mis conversaciones con, con Jess, con, con Ted, pero cuando he llegado aquí creo que gente que no conocía, ¿no? Como much, mucha gente del, del support staff, de la gente, la gente que trabaja alrededor del club, el cómo ellos y ellas quieren y tienen una pasión que es hacer a este Houston Dash un, un equipo ganador en el futuro y cómo están dispuestos a, a trabajar en lo que sea necesario para conseguirlo, creo que ha sido, ha sido para mí la sorpresa más gratificante de momento. Muy bien, uh, buena suerte para el primer partido mañana. Muchas gracias, Gran. Te lo agradezco. A ver si, a ver si es verdad y, y tenemos esa pizquita de suerte, ¿no? Que al final en el fútbol hay que trabajar para conseguirla, pero también hay que tenerla y encontrarla. Gracias. Luke, go ahead. Hey, coach. Welcome to Houston. Um, when you were approached about taking over the team and since uh, you've been watching them long distance, what similarities have you seen between the Dash? and the other teams that you coached? Uh, that is, uh, you know, like maybe in the offensive side, maybe it's a bit more similar to to the team that we had in... in I think it's more similar. I think the dash is a bit more similar to the team I had as Spurs in, in Tottenham, a bit more than what it is uh, to, to Real Betis. Um, 
I think we, there is a very solid, very solid goalkeeper with with a lot of experience that we had that in both. I think the team defensively uh, is very physical. Um, maybe at Betis we had a very strong player, but I think physicality, the the English ones were or the Spurs was a bit a bit stronger. Uh, and I think that one thing that he matches on, on the three cases is that. There are uh, players that are willing to learn, there are players that are willing to work hard, there are players that are uh, willing to develop, uh, and I think that's, that's massively important. Uh, and there are players that maybe now that people don't, you know, they don't pay that much attention to them because they're not playing every game, but I've seen already some special talent maybe with some people that, that wasn't on that page. So um, I hope uh, I can help these players develop. and and to achieve uh, big things for me, as I said, at the international or, or in the club level, uh, helping players and people to develop is one is one of my targets. I was commenting before, like one two girls that when I get to bet when I got to bet is they were only 16 years old and they weren't they weren't professional. Like last Sunday, they become uh, and they were in international. They became uh, European national uh, European champions under 19 with Spain at the age of 17 and. You know, uh, one seventeen, the other one eighteen already. So for me, see if if I can do that with players here and develop uh, players that can become international, so that are internationals and help them to to be more successful in their career, it will be it will be great. And then uh, back in March, you did an interview with Tactical Rant, and you talked about the the phases of the game that are important to you. Mm -hmm. um, which which one do you think the dash are currently strongest in? Well, the dash is definitely. I think at the moment, uh, the probably the counter attack is, uh, you know, that tra offensive transition at pace is something that because of the characteristics of our players is something that that the dash and 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 the the data is there is where they've been the more dangerous. Um, so yeah, I think that would be the one. Good luck, on Fred. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope so. Yeah, go ahead. Hi Juan, I would said a couple more if that's okay. Um, one sort of on the data uh, and, and the phases of play as, as Louis was saying, the last game was arguably the Dash's worst game, uh, especially on the attacking side of the ball, really struggled to create chances. We saw Ebony Salmon kind of completely disappear um, in the second half especially. What has your kind of coming in, are you looking at that last game and, and, and dissecting it and saying, you know, this is what went wrong, this is what went wrong, or is it about getting space from that, it kind of walk me through what you've been looking at, what you've seen from the recent performances or performances before that may be, and, and how has that played into your preparation? Yeah, I think that 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 only focusing on one game is not realistic. No, like uh, football with coaches, trust me, not only um, us here, every coach uh, does a lot of work to try to help the team. Uh, obviously, the last game, it wasn't a, a very good game. Even with that, probably was a game to draw in new because I don't think Orlando didn't do that much neither to, to win that game. Uh, but I think overall the performance of the team and under Sarah and all the coaching team has been fantastic given the, circun the circumstances and the change of roster between last year and this year and, and everything that has been happening. So uh, I think that in terms of that, the team has been performing fantastically well. So. It's a question we haven't really looked at that game that much. It's been an, an overall analysis of what can be our strengths and uh, going forward, how we want to play, how we want to obviously face face this very difficult game against Chicago. We want to go out there, we want to compete, we want, we want to try to win. Uh, uh, we want to win the game, obviously, against against a very difficult side. And we'll be more focusing on what we want to do against Chicago more than what we didn't do right against against Orlando, if that makes sense. And when you talk about the faces, we've tried to install some principles in, in every single one of them. What do we want to do in possession, in the in the counter press when we, want, when we lose the ball, what we want to do on well, we have to defend a bit more organized and, and in the counter attack and also in, in the set pieces. So it's been a lot of information trying to drift feed it and divide it during the week so the players don't get overloaded. And, and hopefully tomorrow you can see uh, certain patterns or, or certain ways of doing things that, that you and, and all that are who, who come to the stadium or watch on tele nationally or internationally uh, enjoy because that's the reason why we do what we do. Should we expect many tactical shifts or is it about getting the things that were already there right? 
I think it is uh, for me with the tactical changes. I'm, a, you know, I think that football is a very dynamic, uh, very dynamic game. I don't really like talking too much about shapes because you know it changes constantly. Like sometimes it looks more like a like a three five two. Sometimes it looks more like a four five one. But but there will be there will be something uh, that change. Uh, but as you say, it's a question of uh, it's more about making ways working uh, you know in make that stronger and and fix the things that are not working more than completely change everything fantastic my only final final question yeah, is can no, no spain problem. win the can spain win the euros yeah of course every team that is in the competition can win the euros uh, obviously uh, in football details make the difference and when you lose players like jenny hermoso and alexia putellas just before, no, to to such, they are key key players for the national team, uh, so it will be a bit more difficult and challenging. Uh, but I think, well, you know, I I really hope that that they can be, no, they can win that that game that we have left in the group, and they can go through and from there uh, go and and try to to make Spain win finally a, a senior tournament because there is definitely Spain is definitely at the moment the best the best country in the youth tournament. So hopefully, in in the Euros they can they can go and win it. And they'll be playing England in the next round. Is it to bounce back after last week's result? Um, yeah, it's been an interesting week, obviously, with the arrival of um, Juan, um, but it's been intense, and I think a lot of information has been put into place, um, not necessarily anything that's like reinventing the wheel, just more so principles of play, which is a good reminder, honestly, at the midpoint of the season as well, um, because those details are going to really see us through positive moments, um, as well as when the going gets tough. Um, and certainly this previous result was not at all one that we saw coming. Um, so it's definitely um, been an interesting week, but one that's been really rewarding um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Absolutely. Theo, go ahead. Hi, Bree. Um, what's it like as a player to have three technically three head coaches in a season um, and kind of like a different person leading the training, a, a new set of ideas. Is it quite, is it energizing or is it, are there like frustrations or kind of just trans issues with transitions that come with that? Um, yeah, I think obviously it's not necessarily ideal because you're getting different um, cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. So uh, that might be challenging for players to adapt specifically to what is, um, you know, required or, you know, tactically speaking, what the vision is. But that being said, um, I think like adversity really pulls a team together. So I've seen, in my opinion, like a positive external like approach in my, but it's obviously very different. Um, the systems are different. The styles of play are different. Um, but like I said, I think with with Juan, it's not necessarily that we're reinventing the wheel either. It's just at least this last week been a reminder of what makes teams successful. And it's not something that's different from each coach that we've had at the helm, uh, but more so just a reiteration of the basics. And so, like I said, I think it's been a positive week overall um, and a positive transition. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, I'm not going to lie, there is some challenges to that. Um, Obviously, for individuals within the group too, you know, someone's opinion of you as a player might be different from another person's opinion. So for some, it's an opportunity and others, it might be scary um, with the arrival of a new coach and just the uncertainty. But like I said, for the most part, I don't think that most of us have focused on that necessarily. And it's been less of a distraction and more of let's just get to work. I mean, like the first two days of training were pretty um, high intensity. <laughs> So it's kind of hard to focus on your anxiety when you're <laughs> just like literally running across the field. So <laughs> it was overall, I think, in my opinion, really positive. <laughs> yeah. That, that sounds healthy. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of on that, Juan said, you know, he really wanted to achieve getting to know you, getting to know the coaches as well, the players and the coaches. What was he doing to achieve that, um, you know, getting, building those relationships? 
Um, I think it's going to take time. I definitely, I definitely see the motivation um, to get to know us as like more than players as, as people, which I appreciate. Um, I guess like little things, it's kind of weird, but like greeting us every time we come in and out of the training ground has been really nice. Um, and taking moments, I guess, when he has, I, you know, one-to-one with a person is just like speaking to us like frequently, I guess, but it's, like I said, it's been a short work week. So it's, I'm sure he's going to take the time to get to know a lot of people. I know that he reached out over a phone to a couple players on the team just to introduce himself. Um, and he has like past experience with some players that are actually on our team at the moment. So, um, like I said, I just think it's going to take time. It's been going on four days of him. Yeah. So can't ask him to meet the whole group yet. <laughs> For sure. What, what, what do you feel like the role he's put Sarah in or Sarah's put herself in this week and, and how have you maybe like used her as, as a way to integrate Juan better? Yeah, um, I think Sarah was really excited for Juan to arrive just so that we can all be all on the same page because obviously he was remote for the time being um, and we were gonna have a transition period of, you know, previous tactics versus what Juan wants us to do now. And so um, I've seen her just really facilitating a lot like for instance, last night, some of the things that we were working on, we split the group in two and um, she led one group, which I was a part of. Um, and you can just see like, they're really, it's a really strong work relationship in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I just, overall, I think Sarah's been a positive light. Uh, you know, it's hard to deny that. And moving forward, I she's already played such an instrumental role that it's hard to not see Quan without like his assistant, so yeah um first night for Juan uh, ever in the NWCL ever as Houston Dash coach it's going to be at PNC Stadium in front of the home fans um what are you feeling about tonight kind of atmospherically or energetically it feels like a big night in the NWCL obviously for, for his career and for you as players is that kind of adding to a bit of the fuel of making Saturday night kind of more than just a game or more than just three points yeah, it honestly feels like a fresh start for, I think, most of us. Like I said, it's like midway through season. Um, so you almost have to close the door on like the past successes that we've had and focus on what's to come because that's what will help us get to playoffs. Um, but yeah, like for the most part, I, you know, and especially, you know, injecting a new coach at this point in the season is bringing like a fresh uh, passion or excitement that like a lot of us, I mean, we have a whole week off coming soon. So this feels like a party going into that week because we've literally worked our asses off. I don't know if I can say that. And then obviously we get the reward um, to play. And then we have that whole week off where I think a lot of us are going to use that vacation just for how long the season's already been. Um, so I think there's more positive vibes. It sounds like a total weirdo, like a hippie. There's more positive vibes going into the game than there is pressure um, in that regard. Um, because I think, like I said, it's just a fresh start for everyone. Lots of vibes are good. Uh, my last question is a more general, but obviously we saw Sophie score a screamer and uh, Annalisa score a good goal as well um, this week. How has it been from home watching the CONCACAF W tournament or the Euros? Any takeaways from watching your teammates and stuff like that? Um, it's always awesome. Like I think I posted about the Canadians recently because it's just such a cool thing to see your teammates on an international level um yeah Chappie with a header goal <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I can't wait to see her and talk about it but yeah um it's been honestly awesome to see them at that level and um tournament's been exciting I don't think I could have predicted most results of any of the games to be quite frank um so it's exciting and then obviously they're moving on and they're qualifying and then Watching even um, the AFCON Cup and stuff like that has just been exciting just to see the international level and the growth of the game in general. It's just been awesome. Cheers. Thanks so much for your time, Brie. Awesome. Thank you. Luke, go ahead. Hey, Brie. Hi. Um, thinking about when you got here um, was just at the Challenge Cup that you guys ended up winning. How similar maybe is this team to that team? Whew. Yeah, I mean, obviously, personnel wise, it's changed quite a bit, but um, I think like the same excitement that I felt in 2020 uh, 
with me coming to the club, I guess it's like a fresh start. I'm feeling again with Juan. So I really am looking forward to this weekend's game as well as um, the rest of the season. And like I said, it just feels like a brand new start for a lot of us, which is pretty energizing. You can hit a lull mid season a lot of times, and then you can drop points. And quite frankly, recently, we haven't done a good enough job of picking up points. And so hopefully this will inject some positivity as well as um, like a fresh start for a lot of players. Um, so I, I'm, I'm personally really excited. And, and like I said, I think it's hard to, it's hard to quantify. Obviously we have different players, but I do feel the same energy if that makes any sense which I know it sounds really looney tunes but definitely like the same energy from 2020 and then now with the arrival of Juan so yeah and then on Saturday night when you think about um you you said you know the things haven't quite gone according to plan the last couple of games but um what is some what is one thing maybe that the team needs to do uh in order to post that W that maybe they haven't been doing as well yeah, I mean, the obvious one, I think, would be to score goals. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the other obvious, I think, is we've we've created a lot in terms of building, and we got to the final third, and it just it hasn't seemed to click. Even regardless of goal production, I, I would say that even hanging out in the final third and, like, really putting teams on their heels and putting the pressure on them to defend us hasn't really been the case in the last couple of games. Um, and that totally changes, in my opinion, the the feel of a game um, and you can feel the momentum. Uh, so that would be definitely something that we would need to improve on. Um, and hopefully that can happen. And quite frankly, Chicago is a really good test for that. They're very um, hardworking, disciplined, as well as organized in their attack and defensively. So it's going to be a real test this weekend for us to you know, improve and really put into action everything that we say we want to do. Um, but yeah, obviously goal production would be great. <laughs> this one kind of puts you on the spot, but if you were, if you were a fan watching the game uh, or you were talking to a fan, who would you tell them that they need to watch tomorrow night? That maybe is going to be a difference maker that we might not have thought about. Oh gosh. <laughs> that is a huge question. Um, man, that, that's really difficult. I don't know how to answer that. Cause I, I really do admire all my teammates and I think, everyone brings such a unique feel to the game so it's really hard to pinpoint one person so maybe um, you sorry so maybe you <laughs> no, no 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 that's not what I'm getting at <laughs> definitely not no no no. I just saying like it, there's so many quality people within our our lineup but yeah um I mean I think I and I don't know the starting 11 actually so I'm gonna back out of that question <laughs> all right good luck tomorrow night Thank you. Grant, go ahead. Hey, Bree. Um, you said that uh, uh, Juan Carlos has kind of gotten back to basics with some principles of play. Is, is there maybe one of those that has resonated with you at this point? Yeah, um, it's, it's interesting. So I formerly had, prior to Houston, a Spanish coach. And so it's kind of weird to then, like, it feels like I have deja vu. It's like the same principle, same principles of play. So one thing for me that I really have appreciated is the idea of like a counter press. Um, I'm like a firm believer now it might be being weird, but you can control your energy attitude and effort. Like other things in the game sometimes are just completely out of your control. So, um, he made a comment within training, for instance, that he wasn't going to have a go at us. If for instance, we took a shot and, it didn't go in, but the one thing that he would have a go at us for is our um, effort in terms of like, if we turn the ball over and we needed to recover it. So that's something that I resonate with on like a culture standpoint, um, as well as uh, I think it's just like a huge key marker of success for most football matches is how can, how quickly can you then get the ball back once you've made a mistake and um, counter pressure, in my opinion, is what wins and loses games a lot. Um, I asked him about you. He said you were doing fantastic uh, on, on the pitch lately and in training. And he said that, that Bree has different ways of understanding the game. Um, I've got, yeah, I've got, I'm trying to, I guess, kind of understand what he means about it. Um, I, is it do you think he's talking about your, your knowledge that's come from playing different positions or is it playing uh, under different coaches and different systems? 
I quite frankly have no clue what he means by that. <laughs> so I'm just as confused as you. I'll be asking him tonight. What the heck? <laughs> well, okay. It's a it's a it's a good sign though that that he uh, that he admires your understanding of the game. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe maybe one more thing uh, about you know playing playing different different uh, roles. I, th I think in the last game you were in more of attacking role and the, and the previous one in, in more defense. Um, you know, wh where kind of this, this year have, have, have you felt like your, you know, your game has grown, um, that, that you've had kind of a special focus if there has been one? Um, I think for me, just getting back into the midfield has been a real treat. Um, I had played left wing previously the last couple of seasons and I didn't mind, but I didn't feel like I'm really a left winger by heart and trade, but, uh, I guess moving forward since being in the midfield, like you said, I've played defensive roles, then played attacking roles. Um, it's really hard to say at the moment, just because I feel like I haven't even had that many games to really settle in, but I guess one thing for me that like consistently people can always rely on is just my like work rate and the ability to also win balls back. Um, I'm not scared of challenges and I have no issue um, getting into tackles and that's not trying to be like nasty or I'm like this player that's a big shot in terms of hitting people. But I think that's like just one thing, like I said, the counter pressure aspect of the game, I like really res resonate with. And so Hopefully that's already shown through and then you just refine the other pieces of the game that's necessary. But that's always something that I think a coach as well as a fan could hopefully rely on me to do. All right. Good luck out there tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate your time. One more question for me, Bree. What are some of the keys to tomorrow's match? Yeah, um, I think, like I said, moving forward, using some of the back to basic principles that we've gone over throughout the week in training and some of the high intensity uh, sessions that we've used will hopefully pay off. And um, the, with the arrival of Juan, you know, we'll use that excitement and energy to really put out a proper performance against Chicago um, and deny them the ability to play the way they want to play and hopefully play into some of the positive strengths that we have as a group collective.